Coming up, Virgin Galactic breaks the sound barrier. NASA sticks with Soyuz through 2017. And Texas finally gets their space shuttle. Sort of, not, not really. All that and a whole lot more on the Season 6, Episode 13 of Space Vidcast for May the 4th. This will be a flawless show. And welcome to Space Vidcast Live. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me as always, the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham will be your hosts for this epic show. There was a little bit of news that came out of Mojave, or as we like to call it, Mojave, this last week. Just you. J okay, as I like to call it, <laughs> Mojave, this last week. Virgin Galactic finally fired their engine in Spaceship Two, while in a drop test. This is the first time the two have been combined while flying through air, and they also broke the sound barrier. We've got a quick clip highlighting everything that happened. Here you go, Virgin Galactic. Eight and a half years ago when we embarked on this program, I would never have thought that it was going to take us eight and a half years to reach this milestone. And I think it just proves just how difficult uh, rocket science really is. It is strange to think that only 500 people have been into space. And our dream is to ultimately enable many kids who are watching this program uh, to be able to go into space. And I think we can make that dream become reality. Today we achieved a huge milestone for the company, which was that we broke the speed of sound and we had our first powered flight, and uh, the team is just incredibly jazzed. We are now off to the races in terms of powered flight. So this was the first powered flight. We'll have um, a few more this year as we extend the burn times and as we approach uh, our first space flight. And then what comes after that is commercial service. And now we'll be ramping up the building of spaceships, we'll be ramping up the building of motherships, we'll be ramping up the building of rockets. It's going to be the start of a you know, whole new era of space travel. It's going to be tremendously exciting. Everything's possible, I think, after today. All right, so uh, pretty awesome stuff happening in Mojave with regards to Spaceship Two. Um, I, you know, they they have always said that they're not going to fly people until they're ready and it's right. safe. But you, you kind of have to have the engine in the vehicle tested, ready to go before you can actually fly. So, um, you know, uh, my prediction is we're actually going to see Spaceship Two uh, reach the edge of space by the end of 2013. Not necessarily with paying passengers mm, in in right. demo flights, and right. I, I think we could potentially see paying passengers go up in 2014. So, it, you know, we've heard for like ever that Virgin Galactic was really close, really close, really close. Right, right. But now they're really close for realsies. 
<laughs> they're really, really, they're close. really, really close. <laughs> <laughs> they should be able to do some cool stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's what's happening in Mojave or what happened in Mojave this last week. Um, moving on, NASA has purchased some seats on Soyuz up through 2017. Now, for those who don't know, right now, the only way for NASA astronauts to make it to the International Space Station is aboard a Soyuz rocket from Russia, Roscosmos, mm -hmm. and we had an agreement with them, NASA had an agreement with them for X number of seats over X number of years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, I forgot the existing agreement, it's like $60 million a seat. Something close to that, yeah. Pretty freaking expensive. Uh, they've extended this to 2017, and the price of the seats go up now. Right. Yeah. Right, of course. But uh, unfortunately, there are some people who have taken that little bit of information and just said, well, then that means that NASA can't fly any astronauts on anything else until after 2017. Well, and I was going to, right, and I actually mentioned that. You, right. you said, you know, they made it sound like this, and they did. Charlie Bolden, in his statement, was, when you go back and look at it, it sounds like he says, we're not doing anything else right. until... Uh, at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. But I I think maybe he misspoke. I'm not sure. I, I think, There's yeah, no I think technical reason you couldn't have two launch providers doing stuff. Exactly. Right? So you've got SpaceX who is bidding on or has won the, uh, the crew transportation to the International Space Station. If they're ready before 2017, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why they wouldn't be allowed to send a crew to the International Space Station. Maybe they won't be ready. I don't know. But no matter what, this is just a good safety net for NASA, regardless, right? right? right. So even if SpaceX is ready, awesome. Now you've got two launch providers. You've got redundancy. That's a good thing. And then you've also got Sierra Nevada working on their little miniature, the mini space shuttle. It's cute and small and tiny, so, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, and then Orbital has been coming along really well. as. Yes, but Orbital's um, cargo. Right, but I well, I suppose, but the, they don't intend to. Never mind. All right, see, carry on saying stuff all over again. <laughs> uh, moving across the country, so that would be. I'm not sure what NASA center that would be. So let's move down to Texas, as sure. it were. Uh, Texas back in the day complained about not getting a space shuttle. Right. You know, we gave space shuttle Endeavor to. Um, California Science Center, mm -hmm. Space Shuttle Discovery went to Smithsonian, mm -hmm. and Space Shuttle Atlantis went to the Kennedy Space Center mm -hmm. in Florida, and Texas got nothing. Even Space Shuttle Enterprise went to New York. Yes. Truly, NASA got nothing. This is the place where they flew the space shuttles for their entire career, and they're like, what the heck? Why didn't we get a space shuttle? Well, now they kind of get one. M more actually, they get the shuttle carrier aircraft. Yes. They don't really get... The, the thing on top, that's going to be a fake shuttle. They get the thing that carried the shuttle right. everywhere else. Well, and the fake shuttle, the mock shuttle, as it were. As it were. As it, not a fake shuttle per se. Uh, my understanding is it's already there and already available to see, but then they're going to basically replant it on top of the shuttle carrier aircraft, or ska, as some people like to say, also the name of some famous music. Um <laughs> So, but that'll be at the Space Center in Houston, which is a really cool thing. Um, i hoping that you can go on and tour the Space Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, which would be really, really cool. Uh, kind of see all the structure on the inside, all the, you know, they take out all the seats. Yeah. There's only some seats up front. It's a really, really cool thing. I got to go inside. I'm going to brag a little bit. Um, yeah, no, but that's a really cool thing. And, and it, if it's the only one that's out there, then it's definitely a reason to go down to... Houston and and see that and tour that and mm -hmm. all those now, the Houstonites are still a little miffed if you go to the comments on like in Gadget and, and all the other they're like yeah. I don't understand why we didn't get a shuttle the reason you didn't get a shuttle is because you put forward a terrible bid that's why you didn't get a shuttle you put zero effort into it and that's what happened you don't just get given a shuttle a 1.2 billion dollar national treasure because you think you deserve one that's why you didn't get one. And now, if you disagree with me, feel free to leave your comments below and yell at me for being a total horrible, horrible person. Also, but that's what happened. Uh, this is why we don't have children. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
uh, phone sats. If you guys remember these, check this out. Here's a picture from one of the phone sats that we were talking about, launched aboard Orbital's Antares uh, spacecraft. And these are images that are being downloaded. This is just one of the images. You can actually go to phonesat.org, mm -hmm. I believe it is. And in the uh, upper navigation section, there's a uh, thing that says pictures. You can look at all the different uh, pictures from these phone sets. It's kind of humorous because it's like bad photos from the 90s kind of thing. Yeah, right? but they're from phones. They, they are. They're, they're from like phones well, in space. From space, I suppose. But uh, yeah, no, it was really cool. I thought it was really cool. Uh, you can see the pictures from Graham and also from Bell. Where's Alexander? I, I don't. I didn't hmm. see the pictures from Alexander. Uh, you can also get some of the data stuff. They've got, actually got full data logs of everything that they're doing as well on the website. So it's just kind of a fun little thing that you can do, understanding that this is really inexpensive satellite imagery, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Nanosats, phone mm -hmm. sats that are doing this. So helping to drive the cost of these things down. If we can get the launch costs down as well as the satellite costs down, who knows what new industry will open up in space? It's kind of, it's actually kind of a cool idea, which is a direct 180 of where I was last season. If no you ask me, right? Because last season I'm like, I don't get it. I, this isn't going to do anything. Space is too hard. It's too expensive. You guys are underestimating this stuff. Right. And and I think I may have been, and uh, I, I'm not sure I want to admit this on camera. Uh huh. I may have been wrong. Oh, may have. May have been wrong. May have. Somebody edit that so it's it actually spells <laughs> that out correctly, please. <laughs> That would be great. May have been wrong. Only mm. on May the 4th will I actually admit you. <laughs> admit you. You didn't hear me say that. Yeah. Ouch. So, uh, no, I actually, I, th I think this could be some potentially really cool things. I'm excited to see, you know, this is just the first iteration, but I'm excited to see what iteration two, three, four, and five actually uh, bring up. Oh, that's cool. And uh, before we go to break, um, we actually have a request to Space Vidcasters, specifically any Space Vidcast Android developer. If you are a space nerd and you have an iPhone, you're well aware of the application Mission Clock. It is, hands down, the best space nerd application on the planet. And if you, if you have an iPhone you and you don't have Mission Clock, you need to go get Mission Clock. It's, it's really freaking cool. There is no Android version of Mission Clock, and we realized this a long time ago, and said, look, if we want to build something like this, we have to have a timeline of all the missions, when they're counting down to, a database of information. And so we've been working over the last year, it's not just me, it's been myself, Pete Rezit, um, Woe Jeffrey from the chat room, a bunch of space vacasters have been working to create a library of data, and we call that launch library. That library is done, and there's actually an API built into the whole thing. So we have this data, and we have a, you, the ability for you to grab this data from us now what we need is someone to build an application, a beautiful application, because there is an application on Android that is fugly. What we'd like is a beautiful <laughs> application like Mission Clock for Android, but don't stop there. Oh, but there's more! But there's more! Why just Android? Why not Windows Phone? Ooh. Why not websites, right? Make it so that you can call this up and place this data on your own website. This little widget? Little widgets. That would be very cool. Right? WordPress plugins. So you can add this to your website. The data is free. We're giving it away to everyone, right? Mm -hmm. There are no restrictions on it. So just come in, grab the data. If you'd like more information on it right now, it's it's not something you can just go and develop against. You need to contact me, Benjamin at spacefakecast.com, and we'll get you the information necessary. We'll get you in touch with the other developers so that you can start working with this, with this stuff. We're in the very early stages right now. This mm -hmm. isn't this hasn't been hardened, so it's not ready for 10 billion people to hit it, which is why <laughs> you need to contact me. But we want to get the ball rolling we want to get some stuff uh, moving and, and do some really cool things with this information right so yeah. we've built a database of information for you to take and do cool things with so anyhow uh, benjamin at spacevacast.com let's take a quick break and when we come back we're going to continue a conversation we had in last week's after dark hmm. is mars one a scam stay with <laughs> us we'll be right back Because isn't this exactly what we as a community want? Don't we want humans on Mars? Step one, send colony ship. Step two, lose contact with colonies. If it fails, it will fail epically and in front of the world. Space Vidcast After Dark is available to our Epic subscribers. For more information on that, go to spacevidcast.com slash epic. It is the show after the show. Any topic is on the table, and we have had Space Vacast Epic episodes since season two or three. I don't remember when. Something like and that. And yeah. you can go, if you're an Epic subscriber, which is $10 a month or $100 a year, you can go back and view the entire catalog. It's 
insanely large number of gigs of content that you can go back and watch. Some of it's really cool, some of it's fairly boring, but sometimes they're like extended interviews uh, that you just don't, there's no other place on the planet that has access to that yeah. stuff. Uh, so it's really cool stuff. And by the way, it helps us continue to produce the show. So your Epic subscriptions absolutely help us. Every single one of them helps a great deal. On that note, uh, Mars won. We got into a heated debate in After Dark last week, and I thought we should kind of extrapolate that and bring that into the public show because okay. um, when I when you go to Reddit and there's a new Mar, new, any new Mars One news, like the first few comments that get upvoted will be, yes, but Mars One is a scam. You guys are all dumb for you believing this. Right. How dare you even post this in a legitimate space forum? Right. And uh, we got to talking about this last week and I, I'm not sure that it's a scam. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the reason they think it's a scam is because right now, for those who don't know, Mars One is a program uh, it is a reality television show that will occur on Mars in 2023, I believe it is. Uh, someone in the chat room correct me if I got the year wrong. The, uh, what they're going to do is they're not going to develop any technology themselves. They're going to rely on other launch spaceship and uh, service providers, essentially, in the aerospace industry to pull all the technology and develop it. And they will pull it together into a cohesive program mm -hmm. that sends astronauts to Mars. Mm -hmm. You can never return home. No. It is a one-way trip, and on that one-way trip, it is a reality television show. The concept behind it being this will be the one of humanity's greatest achievements ever, far bigger than the moon landing, far bigger than any of the Olympics, and they use the Olympics as their is the, kind of their scale, Benchmark. and they, they, they say landing on Mars will cost $6 billion. The Olympic Committee makes $4 billion just in advertising revenue every year. So since this is substantially larger and over a large, longer time frame, mm -hmm. they feel the six billion number is not unreasonable to obtain. There you go. All right. So that's what Mars One is. They have opened up applications because it's not just at NASA astronauts that are going. Right. Anyone on the planet is eligible to go to Mars One. You just need to create a video, send in an application, and here's where they say scam. You also need to send in your $30 application fee. Right. Which really, all in all, is not that steep of a price. They could have right. said $250 application fee. Right. Right. Uh, so that right off the bat is is one thing. And was, there are colleges when you apply, you have to put in an application fee. Yeah. They, they, you know, it's just a, a qualification is basically what it comes down to of that you are serious, you're willing to put down some money on this. And you have to make the price big enough so it sounds serious enough and small enough that just about anybody can apply. So th that's right But off you the need bat. to weed out the crazies. You do. And let's be clear, for anyone who works in aerospace, there are a lot of crazies. And right. you need to weed them out, and a $30 application fee is the easiest way to do that. It won't <laughs> weed them all out, but it will get rid of a good 80% of them right off the bat. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, there, there's that. And and because uh, Ben and I have a tendency to share similar opinions, we usually try and take one stance against the other person. So uh, please forgive us if one of us really, really offends you for a second here. It's probably not exactly what it, it seems like. Don't forgive like. us. Hate us forever. It's going to be awesome. Just hate him forever. Mm. That that would really be better. Uh, yeah, so uh, scam, as D Dave Mastin in the chat room said, maybe not a scam necessarily, but really difficult to believe. Fantasy. I think over over underestimating what is required to get to Mars. Right. right. So if you look at the names and the people behind it, I think they're they're good people. They're good names. And when you look at the technology, you think, yeah, this is achievable. It will be difficult, but it's achievable. Mm -hmm. But then you look at, let's use Virgin Galactic as an example. Mm -hmm. They're like, what, five years behind schedule? Seven right. years behind right. schedule? Right. I mean, right. they are really, really, really behind schedule. <laughs> and that's suborbital flight. They're not even making it into orbital space. Right. That's not orbit. That's not getting to Mars. I mean, we've lost our space legs. Asking us to get get to an alien planet, land there, and then create a habitat that right. will sustain those humans for the rest of their life. That's the other key. You need to be able to sustain those humans for as long as they live because they can't come home. Uh, yeah. yeah. But what happens if they have kids? Because what resources are they going to pull from? Right. right, right, exactly. Well, and the, in the Mars One, 
like with any reality TV show, you can only have the same cast of characters for a certain amount of time, right? You have to have a new influx of new people at some point. That's kind of the plan, right? They, I believe they get sent in groups of four. So they send their first group of four, and then you wait a little while for the planets to align, and they send another group of four, and you wait a little while, send right. another group of four, right. so forth and so on. Before you know it, you have tens of people. <laughs> living on Mars. Tens and tens of people. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, I mean, you had brought up last week that, you know, isn't this what we're looking for? Isn't this what we as a space community are really trying to strive for, to get people off of this planet? And so why are we so down on it as a concept? And my response in general was, well, yeah, I, I want to get humans to Mars. I want there to be a colony and I want it done right. I don't want it done as something some stupid like uh, joke. But this, I don't this, want it done in, for but, advertising dollars. I don't want it done so I can be in the what's next wrong with advertising show. dollars. Everything we do in life is advertising dollars now. So this is my point, right? So who cares how we get there as long as it becomes sustainable? As long as what we're not doing is flags and footprints. The way we did it right on the moon mm -hmm. meant that we went to the moon and then we haven't been back since night since the 70s. Right. Right? So Doing it right doesn't actually make a sustainable program. Boy. So maybe doing it wrong, or what we in the aerospace community view is doing it wrong, mm -hmm. is actually the way we should be doing it. I think that was my point from last week. Right, right. well, I'm, that's, yeah, I mean, yes, but I guess... I my other sort of issue is how do you continue to make that interesting? What kind of fabricated issues do you have to come up to to continue to make that interesting? And somebody in the chat room said, you know, step one, build a colony on Mars. Step two, lose contact with the colony on Mars. Yeah. And step three, now everybody's interested again. But, right, but you don't have to. And I think that's my, my original point was you let the show run for two years. Right. And then after that, who says that you still need to actually fund the show continually? What you need to do at that point is find a way for the colony to be self-sustaining. So I think that's part of the, what, what's annoying right now in the Mars One plan is they haven't flushed all that out. We need to see a self-sustaining marker in, right. the, in the plan that says, look, you can't come home, but you'll be self-sustaining, needing no resources from Earth by this date, and here's how. Once you do that, the show is no longer required from that moment forward, and now you've got a permanent human outpost on an alien planet. It, it is a little frustrating that they have this great big press conference, and they say, hey, we're going to let everyone know all of these things, and then they didn't answer, like, I don't know, anything. Actually, they were like, basically, said, this whole press conference was, you know, no, you're right, the entire press conference was... Uh, no, I was going to say, they had an entire press conference. <laughs> Honestly, uh, for those of you who watched, I apologize. Uh, although I had nothing to do with it, I so still apologize anyway. Mm -hmm. Because I feel bad. But... Uh, the whole press conference was basically like, hey guys, we've opened applications. And, and everything else that was said was kind of meh yeah. at best. Yeah. And that doesn't make me have a lot of faith in these people that they know what they're doing. They've thought it all out. They know how to do this, that, or the other. They know all of I the think, different... But maybe we're too early. Maybe, maybe they just need another year. Uh, but they can't spend a lot of time because if they're going in the early 20, 2020s... Right, we don't have another year. You, you need, well, you might, right? And the, it, It's kind of like building a house. Right. You need to. You, you spend a lot of time building the foundation and it feels like nothing's going on, nothing's going on. Oh my God, it's going to take forever to build this house. Foundation is done. It looks great and like a week later the whole thing's done. I may be exaggerating slightly, but you get the idea, right? Say, you never built a house, so okay. I have two. Anyway. So, so <sighs> I want to know what you think. So uh, is Mars, to you, is Mars one a scam? Do you think it's just maybe uh, not even possible on the timeline that they've mentioned? Or maybe it's going to happen not on the timeline they mentioned, but on a slightly longer timeline. Right. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? And I, I'd like to challenge every, you know, most of the space figasters who watch the show are already space geeks. So I challenge you, think outside the space geek box for a moment. Mm -hmm. What do the people who aren't normally space geeks think of something like Mars One? Uh, would they be willing to do it? Maybe the space geeks need an influx of ideas and innovation outside the space community. To sure, as soon as the media stops saying, hey guys, one way ticket to Mars. <laughs> why, why? Why does that matter? Because the media is, pres is like, hey, ever want to go to space? Awesome. Want to go to Mars? Great. Want to die there? Because you can't come back. Uh, well, yeah, but I, I'm not sure that's that bad, right? Maybe some people who, maybe some people would say yes. Uh, I, all right, here's another question for the chat room. <laughs> another question for the chat room. Would ignoring Mars One for a moment, would you take a one-way ticket to Mars, knowing you have no chance of returning? That's not to say that you you will die on impact. It means you will 
lead out the rest of your natural life on the surface of Mars with no ability to return back to Earth? Would you be willing to do that? And I'm curious to know how many people in the chat room say yes, no, or otherwise. And then my second part of that is if you can find some friends to comment on YouTube that are not normally space geeks and say, ask them the question, just would you mind spending 30 seconds of just answering this question in the comment section? Right. I'd be curious to know, and somehow we need to mark them as like not space geek. <laughs> NSG, give them a TLA. <laughs> give them a TLA, your poor friends. <laughs> you need to mark this as NSG. <laughs> no, but yeah, have it, that's a good idea. Have a conversation with some people that you know are, are not necessarily space geeks. And maybe not even your friends, but uh, you know, a next generation or an older generation, whoever it is, and come back and list the comments, what they said, what, how they were thinking and feeling about it. Zigger brings up a really interesting point on the chat room. Mm -hmm. And actually, I really, I kind of like this idea. He said, you know what? Let it be even a scam. Okay. At worst, the scammers, or the scam, scammies lose only $30 a day in some of their time. Sure. In exchange for that, mm -hmm. they get to dream. Oh. Right? Now, you can also dream for free. There's that. <laughs> There's that, but some people might need that extra motivation, or maybe they weren't thinking of this. And here's the other neat thing about this. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you think about Mars One, here's the other neat thing about this. It is creating conversations about space where conversations about space yeah. wouldn't normally happen. And conversations, talking about it, whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, it raises public awareness of it. Mm -hmm. And it gets some people potentially interested. Mm -hmm. The end of the Space Shuttle program is why we at Space Vidcast are here. It started <laughs> yeah. a conversation. Otherwise, I wouldn't be working where I'm working. I wouldn't be in the field I'm in. It completely and radically changed my life forever. And I know that there are other Space Vidcasters out there who it's the same story for you. So maybe Mars One, even if they never get off the ground, mm -hmm. maybe Mars One will inspire someone and will end up completely and totally changing their life. Maybe. I don't know. Love to know what you think. Good, bad, otherwise, but civil. Remember, yes. I know it's the internet, and Leave. I know you guys keep it civil. No name calling. No calling people stupid. People have different ideas and opinions. Keeping it civil in the chat room. On that note, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, comments from last week's show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Look into her face that to my name. And welcome back. For those of you who just joined us, yes, this is live. Xaz, I believe it is in the chat yes. room. For those of you watching this on demand, no, it is not live. All right. Uh, some comments. We can only do so much. Durr. Some comments. Oh, my goodness. It looks like our director had a comment. What? Check we let him out. speak? We, well, mm, yeah. uh, he says, that Mars One commercial is kind of inspiring. Kind of. <laughs> Great, Scott. Uh, I'm, I'm so, sure he said it in exactly that voice kinda, as well. Kind of. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> kind of. So that was, uh, that was our director, Dada, Tim Scott. Great Scott! He's never heard that before. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it was. Actually, it was a well, I thought it was a fairly well-produced commercial. It, it, the funny thing is that my Should personal... Should have aired it. My personal opinions about uh, Mars One, mm -hmm. I watched the commercial, I'm like, yeah, ooh, that's it. Oh, Mars One. <laughs> like, that was my reaction as I watched it. <laughs> I was like, that's super... Oh, never mind. Uh, this comment comes from Dan Knight. He says, or as Monty Python would say, Knigget. <laughs> it's okay. If spaceship, right? From uh, yes, Holy Grail. I, yes. Yeah, all right. Yeah, sure. If Spaceship 2 should not reach orbit by 2014, what would be the outcome on x -Core trying to beat Virgin Galactic into space and fly a customer on board the Lynx? But is it possible for x -Core to make this happen? Uh, so, um, point of clarification, the... Lynx spacecraft and the Spaceship 2 spacecraft from mm -hmm. Virgin Galactic uh, are not orbital vehicles. They right. are suborbital vehicles. They cannot reach orbit. Right. So let me just throw that out there and be very clear on that point. Um, at this stage, we've seen an airframe from Virgin Galactic and we've seen a working engine from Virgin Galactic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, both of them combined in a vehicle going faster than sound. 
that is quite a bit further than what we've seen from X-Core. Now, X-Core likes to keep everything close to their chest. We just don't see a lot of stuff. Really but it close. is really, really hard <laughs> to keep a test flight of a vehicle going faster yeah. than the speed of sound mm -hmm. when your neighbors are Dave... And Virgin and right. Scaled and right. Sp Spaceship Company, right? They're all right there in Mojave. <laughs> so uh, someone would have noticed and said something, which right. tells me that Virgin Galactic is quite, is at least ahead, and I will actually uh, fathom a guess to say quite a bit ahead of X Core for this particular vehicle. At this I have point. to say, I think it's interesting that you are pitting these two sort of against each other, that one is trying to beat the other. I think they're both trying to do similar things. I think it's closer to, to cooperation. Yeah, actually, I don't think they're competing really at all. In fact, but, but you uh, see the, what I'm saying? the like, experience on the two vehicles will be totally, totally different. different. Uh -huh. um, on the Virgin Galactic vehicle, you'll be able to get out of your chair, float around, experience zero-g. And with like, other people. With other people. That's the other thing, right? You'll have five of your closest friends throwing up next to you, right? Flo but you, you've got the portals on the side, bouncing off the side. It is a true zero-g flight. You're there to have fun. Mm -hmm. On X-Core, um, it's more of a right stuff thing. You're strapped yeah. into that chair. You're not unstrapping. There's nowhere for you to go. But it's you and the pilot, and that is it. No one else. <laughs> so you still experience zero G. You're still going to sure. be in zero G, but it's not going to be you. You're not going to get out and float around and bounce off and then have other people throwing up in your face. <laughs> It'll just be you throwing up by yourself as the pilot looks at you going, dude, seriously? Okay. So, I, I mean, very, very different flights. Virgin Galactic costs more for now. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. And more? Even... Even outside of that, we had X Core on the show, and they yeah. said, "Look, we never expected to beat Virgin Galactic. In fact, right. we kind of expected them to go by now. We didn't even expect to be second. Right. We thought we'd just make it to the table someday. So right. I think they're happy that they're just making it to the table at some point. There you go. Right? I mean, and it's it's not easy. What what they're doing is not easy. There have right. been a lot of companies that have fallen by the wayside trying to do suborbital flight, trying to make this new industry happen. Mm -hmm. And X Core and Virgin Galactic are both making it. So congratulations to both of them. I, I'm not put, pitting them up next to each other no, or against don't. each other, but it is interesting to think about. Yeah, right? no, I mean, it's just the way that Dan Knight kind of worded it. I was, How I dare was, you, oh, Dan? I'm sorry. How dare you? All right, um, this is from Lee Rocks 22 who mm -hmm. says, that grasshopper video was amazing. Mm. So what are the benefits to vertical takeoff and landing over others like the shuttle? Oh, uh, so wish we had Dave to answer this one. Dave uh, Mastin? Mastin. Yeah, Dave, he, <laughs> Dave, call into the show. <laughs> um, well, it, it really comes down to needed mass, I think, right? So there's a... When you look at the space shuttle and you look at the wings, you don't need the wings on ascent. In fact, they're in your way on ascent. Mm -hmm. You don't need the wings on orbit. Mm -hmm. You really only need the wings for the very, very last part of the flight. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that all of that mass, all of that everything that you're lifting into space, that you're spending fuel and energy to get up there, wasted, completely wasted. Whereas with a vertical takeoff, vertical landing, or VTVL vehicle, uh, it's basically the same core technology we use on rockets, no wasted space, no wasted wings or anything, uh, but you're just disconnecting and then landing the whole stage. Now, you, you do spend more fuel doing that because you have to have the necessary propulsion to slow down and land. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. don't want it to go... That's a bad thing. But you're not wasting nearly... Because you still need fuel on something like a space shuttle right, as well. Right, right. So you... Less mass up into orbit, more efficient, should be more better -er, er Also keep in mind, the space shuttle was woefully expensive. It was supposed to make it cheaper than Apollo, and it ended up not being. Uh, it was scary expensive to do. And that's because the space shuttle was not reusable. It was, at best, refurbishable between every flight. And uh, by the way, just so everyone knows, the official uh, word from Dave Mastin in the chat room is, VTVL is awesome with... Five exclamation points. Five exclamation points. That is Five. the official rocket scientist so, ex, uh, explanation. Just ex, so you know. S, X, mm, mm. All right. This one comes from Nathan Weeks who says, The Mars One plan, the bleh, yes. Mars One plan's main flaw isn't a mission. It's the commitment to indefinite resupply and support missions. Even mm. under ideal circumstances, it would take decades to form a self-sufficient colony. You did not hear that audible mix-up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and no business plan, let alone a reality TV show, can guarantee that kind of long-term funding. It doesn't appear they have thought it out that far. And I think that's... If, if they had a more articulate plan, I think the space geeks would be less critical of it, right? If they said, look, this is how we're getting there. Right. These are the vehicles we're going to use. Right. This is how much it's going to cost. Yep. This is how long it's going to take. Yep. This is this is what we expect for issues. These are the 3D printers yeah, we're going to use. Yeah, if they came out and they bored me to the death with details, I'd be much more willing to buy in. Well, they kind of did in that last meeting, but the no, wrong know details. Well, I yeah, I suppose the wrong details. Wrong details. Uh, yeah, yeah. And... We know from our chat room, uh, have a tendency, uh, space geeks have a tendency to be very detail oriented. Uh, no, right, and uh, and 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 they know their stuff, right? Uh, space geeks in general, uh, usually not that dumb. So if you present this, hey guys, yeah. we totally want to do this like really great thing. A, the space geeks are gonna go, what? What are you doing? What do? You, how are you doing this? Are you crazy? When is this going to get, you know, uh, all of those edge, questions start coming up. The edge of brilliance and insanity is a very th fine line. Very right? fine I mean, line. With a little it's insane, in, it's insane and stupid until it isn't anymore and it's I, brilliant. I, I guess. I Yes. Yes. I, mm, ah, I will hold my tongue for another few months as, you know. Because they, that's all they have. Based right. on their timeline, they don't get like several years to figure this stuff out. Right. They got to figure it out now. Right, because they got to figure out the funding. I mean, uh, funding. Yeah, that's what they really got. All right, <laughs> that's the this only comes part from Yeoman forty five one thirty five. Thanks for making that simple and not putting lots of numbers on it. Oh, I'm going to regret saying it that. May not be their fault. Uh, when they keep saying nominal, this is in regards to Antares. Yes. Uh, ninety three nominal calls. Ninety three. When they keep saying nominal, I keep thinking that they're singing the Muppets theme. Mana mana. Do 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 do. Nominal. Do 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 do. <laughs> Nominal. And it was <clears throat> phenomena. I know, but it was but now it's close. Now it's menomena. 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 This from <laughs> this one comes from uh, George Gallant. Mm, we're gonna say. All right. Said uh, this is also in regards to the orbital launch. Great launch, smooth and clean. If nominal is the new word for normal. I agree. By the way, it is not the new word for normal. <laughs> it is the space nerd for being, I'm a space geek, and I just want to sound space geeky. Oh, mean. I want a t-shirt that says nominal. <laughs> uh, you know, for the space nerds out there, uh, I don't know if it's still up, but the um, the live shows normally have a, a graphic that kind of outlines what we're going to talk about. Yeah. And it very, very... So I, we had a shot of the orbital Antares on the yep. pad, just just like right off the pad, just a little bit. Um, and in the sky, very subtly, I wrote... No, you didn't. I had uh, 93 of them in the sky. In that image. But for the final show, for the final posted show, because uh -huh. Orbital wasn't the main topic, yes, that, that was the only time you could see it is if you watched live. In Which is something I recommend everyone do, because certain parts of the show only happen live. Because then so we just edit them out. We edit them out. <laughs> we edit them back in or something like that. I'd like to thank yes. everyone so much for watching. This has been uh, a great fun. For those Space Vidcast epic subscribers after dark is up next log into space big cast uh, epic account and check that out for those of you watching live continue to stay watching live you can watch a free copy of space big cast after dark for everyone else thank you so much for watching see you next week yeah the nominal drinking game